o kia ora koutou, po puki atua te maonga, ko te awa kairangi te awa, ko tokumaru te waka, uh, ko te ati awa te iwi. He kaimahi a hau ki Natiapa ki te rato ki whakatū. Ko Jean Skilton toko ingoa, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, so kia ora everyone. Um, I work for Natiapa Kiterato, which is one of the eight iwi of Te Tauihu. And um, I'm here today to share a project that we've been doing around um, the tuna population and cultural revitalisation in Nelson Lakes National Park. And this was actually um, a project that we received funding from the Tuae Māori Trust for um, through the Tiaki Wai Fund. So... The people of Ngāti Apakiterato came to Aotearoa on the Kurahopo Waka in the 13th and 14th centuries, um, and they originated from Ngāti of the north, and to, um, to separate themselves, they called themselves Ngāti Apakiterato, which means Ngāti of the setting sun. Today, Ngāti Apakiterato has around 3,500 registered members, and the iwi uh, signed a deed of settlement with the Crown in 2010. This map shows the rohe of Ngāti Apakite Rato. Um, the iwi's rohe extends throughout Nelson and Tasman and then also on uh, the west coast from Farewell Spit in the north down to Cape Falwind um, in the south, so that's just below Westport. We also have areas of interest uh, in Marlborough, but the part of the rohe that I'll be focusing on today is here in Nelson Lakes National Park. So Nelson Lakes National Park is around an hour and a half's drive from Nelson. Um, it consists of two main lakes, Rotuiti and Rotoroa, as well as a number of alpine tarns. Um, you may have heard of Blue Lake, Rotomari Whenua. Um, this has the clearest freshwater in the world, and that's one of the alpine tarns that sits within Nelson Lakes. So all of these lakes are alpine glacial lakes and they're also statutory acknowledgement areas for Ngāti Apa ki te rātou. The whole area is really significant to the iwi uh, and it was used um, by the tupuna for Mahinga Kai um, collection. But the lake that I'll be focusing on today is the largest of the lakes in, Nel in Nelson Lakes National Park. It's called Rotoroa. Long Lake. So Rotoroa is around 13 kilometres long. It has an area of just over um, 2,300 hectares and sits fairly high with an altitude of 420 metres. It's a deep lake. Uh, it's maximum depth of around 130 metres and it's fed by two rivers, the Derville and the Sabine. It then drains into the Gowan River, which is a short river that then connects to the Buller, the Kawatiri River, that flows out to the sea uh, in Westport on the west coast. The lake's surrounded by indigenous beech forest, very dense beech forest, um, dominated by red beech and silver beech. So at the top of the food web in Rotoroa is tuna, and tuna are a highly significant um, species for Ngāti Apaki Te Rato. They were an important mahinga kai source for our tūpuna. And to reflect this as part of their settlement uh, legislation, Ngāti Apaki Te Rato can apply for consent to harvest tuna from Nelson Lakes National Park for customary use, and this is subject to, to certain conditions. Now this is something that the iwi exercise, but it is of paramount importance to the iwi that any harvesting that is done is sustainable. And so that is what has led to this kaupapa. So the objectives of this kaupapa that we developed were to provide information on the tuna population in Rotoroa and use this information to inform the sustainability of the tuna harvest that the iwi is doing in the lakes. We also wanted to use this information to inform the structure of future monitoring programs. So this wasn't a one-off, this was very much a pilot study, and the idea is to continue monitoring the population um, at least annually for the foreseeable future. We also had a strong matauranga Māori component of this work. 
um, and it was important that we were able to provide learning opportunities for the rangatahi as well as our iwi members in general. So in January this year, um, we deployed 14 fight nets um, in Rotorua, and you can see on this map here, each of those red dots is one fight net that was deployed at one location in Rotorua. We actually had the opportunity to include this um, monitoring work within our Mana Rangatahi program. So this is a program that our iwi runs every six months. Um, where we have a group of rangatahi aged 11 to 18 who spend a week doing various projects throughout the rohe. So um, in January, two, two days of their um, mana rangatahi program was spent total immersion in this kaupapa. So we left the nets overnight. Um, we then collected them up the next morning, weighed, counted, measured the tuna that were caught. Ten of these individuals were harvested, and this was for um, the hakari at the conclusion of the Mana Rangatahi program. And then the tuna that weren't harvested were returned unharmed to Rotoroa. So here's some pictures of the rangatahi doing the work. Um, as you can see, they were well and truly getting in there, getting their feet wet. Um, we were also fortunate to be um, joined by staff from the Department of Conservation who, who were involved in this monitoring as well. And um, they were really instrumental in enabling us to, um, to, to do this work in Rotoroa. So here's some results. Um, perhaps the first thing to say is that from those 14 nets that we deployed overnight, we got over 1,000 tonne. So um, there's a lot of tuna in the lake. <laughs> uh, all, but, all but two of these tuna were long fin tuna, so we got two short fins. Um, and there were no differences in the length or weight of the tuna between the different sites where the nets were deployed. The biggest tuna was almost seven kilos and about 1.3 metres in length. Don't worry, we didn't harvest that one. Um, but the majority of the tuna were um, sort of in this size range here. So um, between sort of half a kilo to a kilo in weight and um, 500 to 700 millimetres in length. Now what's really interesting is that as part of Natiapa's permit to be able to harvest tuna, we are allowed to harvest tuna that are up to four kilograms. And this is something that's just been set by Doc and, you know, it's just, just in our, um, in our um, document. So we actually, the tuna that we harvested in January were these guys here. So they had an average weight of two and a half kilos um, and were around 95 centimetres long. So that's well below that four kilo limit, but what was, I guess, slightly alarming is that those tuna are actually still falling within that top 25% of the um, population in terms of weight. And so one of the, I guess, findings from this work that we will take on board going forward is that we will um, look at harvesting tuna that are a bit smaller, um, so potentially around that one to one and a half kilo weight range, so that we are leaving adequate numbers of the larger individuals um, still in the lake. So it's really important to Ngāti Apakite that if we are harvesting tuna, that we are getting the most out of each of those individuals. And so, consistent with that, one of the things we did from the harvested tuna is that we dissected their otoliths. Um, so otoliths are small ear bones um, that just sit in the, the, um, the tuna's head and they have rings on them, like on a tree. So if you count the rings on the otolith, you can age the tuna, get an idea of how old it is. 
So I appreciate this next slide might not be everyone's <laughs> cup of tea, but I do think it's important to be um, upfront about what we, what we are doing. Um, so this is from a head from one of the harvested tuna. Um, the pointer, yep. So in here is where the otoliths were taken from these cavities in here. And these are the otoliths, the ear bones. So these are about half a centimetre in length. These ones have just been dissected, so they haven't been cleaned up yet. But once they're cleaned up, um, cut, sanded down, they look like this. So this picture here is from one of those otoliths. And here you can see the growth rings on the otolith. And so then it's really a matter of just counting those rings to get an idea of how old the tuna is. And um, these are just preliminary results, but what we can say is that from the tuna that have been aged so far, the average age of the tuna that we harvested, so the, that were around two and a half kilos, was 53 years old. Um, which is a little shocking. <laughs> Um, and then if we take into account the average, um, the average weight and the average length of those harvested tuna, we can do some fairly simple calculations and say that the average weight gain was around 50 grams a year and they grow at a rate of just under two centimetres a year. Um, obviously they don't grow in a linear fashion, but this just gives us uh, a general idea of um, how the tuna within that population are growing. So to sum up, and just referring back to the objectives of the work, um, we were fairly confident that we did manage to achieve the objectives of our study, and that we were able to provide information on the tuna population at Rotoroa, and we will certainly be using this information to inform our future harvesting, in particular looking at the size of individuals, the weight of them that we're harvesting. We certainly provided learning opportunities for our rangatahi, and we did also share uh, maturanga Māori associated with the harvest, although I appreciate I haven't really touched on the maturanga Māori today. So um, just, to, just to end, what I'm going to do is play a video um, that we put together from this kaupapa that um, does repeat some of what I've said, I'm sorry, but also does touch on a few other things. Um, so, let's see if this works. Part of Natiapa's uh, settlement with the Crown, they can harvest tuna from Nelson Lake. So Nelson Lake is a national park, but as it is a highly significant area to Natiapa, we can harvest um, tuna for customary purposes. got this amazing opportunity here today. We've got you know, experts from DOC, tuna experts, um, who have done a lot of work with tuna over the years from a scientific perspective. So they're here to really share as much knowledge as they can with the rangatahi, and it's a perfect opportunity for our rangatahi to ask questions of the DOC staff and to learn from, yeah, again, from both a cultural perspective and a scientific perspective as well. It's really important that our rangatahi gain all this knowledge, then they can pass that on through the generations. I mean, tuna are such an important Tama species and um, it's really important that this knowledge is gained, shared and pa passed on. One of the main aspects of Manarangatai is cultural revitalisation. The tuna harvesting process has been what our tupuna have done for a long, long time. And so in recent years, we've been doing it in a contemporary style to bring food for our AGM. But this year, the rangatahi are out and they're going to collect it themselves. So the kids are out on the boat at the moment, picking up some nets so we can process that for our hākari. They've got a sense of pride in what they've done. Roa is we are monitoring the tuna population. 
So we are looking at the, the health of the population. So we have um, fike nets that we've placed out in the lake. We've put 14 nets out. If you're wanting to harvest tuna from from the lake it is really good to know that it's a healthy population because if it's not a healthy population and you're removing some of those those big tuna that contribute to the spawning fish that then do their tuna heke down the river to the sea you'll you in the population will start going down um, and so it is really important to know that there are new fish coming into the lake to replace those fish that have been harvested and removed from the lake. mainly put the, the fight nets in the sort of habitats where we think the tuna will be hanging out in the lake. Tuna really love um, lots of cover, so you know where there's logs in the lake, where there's any harakeke hanging over the edge of the lake, that's the sort of places where they really love to hide, they love cover and that's also where they will find some of their, there'll be food in those areas as well. So I've just been uh, sharing some kōrero, talking about why it's a significant area for us as Natiapa, uh, why it was significant to our ancestors and us as a part of a cultural re revitalization. The significant resources around and in the lake are including the kai, so specifically the tuna. Tuna has always been a significant uh, resource, a significant creature for our people. It's always been something that we've harvested. It's been a part of our survival ever since arriving from Hawaii, our Pacific Island homeland. So our tipuna have come to and stayed along the lakes and traditionally harvested tuna. And so part of what we're doing is that cultural revitalization, maintaining those cultural practices. So kia ora, um, and just to, to finish off, um, just a few acknowledgements firstly to Te Akiwai for um, their funding that contributed to this project. Um, as you can see in the video, we were very fortunate to have um, the Department of Conservation support this work and assist us. Um, and in particular, and I apologise, I forgot to mention this when we were talking about otoliths, but um, the Cawthron Institute were instrumental in enabling us to be able to do that otolith mahi. So um, a huge thank you to all of them. Um, and tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.